Wolfenstein, Blade of Agony. Is it worth a buy? Of course it is, it's f***ing free, you prick. Well, let's read the words of the words of whoever wrote this. Blade of Agony is a story-driven first-person shooter. The project is inspired by World War II shooters from the 90s and early noughties, like Wolfenstein 3D, Medal of Honor, and Call of Duty. All great games, by the way, guys. But with faster-paced gameplay in the spirit of Doom. Guys, this is a free, standalone game. The link's in the description where you can get it from. It's three campaigns, 30 levels, took six years to create, and it's freaking awesome, guys. Absolutely great fun, this. The level design is fantastic, really is. This is kind of like playing a successor to Wolfenstein 3D. Remember the shareware version of, of Wolfenstein 3D, the, the first ever first person shooter that came out? Well, it's a bit like that, uh, Re Return to Castle Wolfenstein, but it's like a, a mishmash between the, the both of them, really. Um, a lot of the units you'll recognize from Wolfenstein 3D, uh, but they look a bit more like Doom in this. It's, it spans over three campaigns, like I said, and it encompasses loads of different missions that actually took place in World War II, like the Dam Busters, Operation Overlord, things like that. But it also goes into the um, sinister side of what the Nazis were doing uh, with uh, the occult and things like that. And you've got the, the kind of monsters that they create and all of that kind of stuff. There's tons and tons of levels. And guys, the gunplay is great. Now, there's plenty wrong with this as well, which I'm going to come, come to in a second. But we'll start with what's right with it and we'll end with what's wrong with it. Um, the gunplay is fantastic. You stick your lips out as you fire the machine guns, whether it's a Sten gun or an MP40 that you've picked up, whatever it is, you just unleash hell with that. And the accuracy is really, really nice. You can turn the crosshairs off as well if you don't want to play with a crosshair. I prefer a crosshair because I'm shit. And as you're going around the levels, you're finding secrets, you're getting ambushed, you come across situations that look perfectly benign, but then all of a sudden all hell breaks loose. There's reinforcements coming, so places that you've cleared can get flooded again with enemies. Nothing respawns as such, but when you com uh, complete certain objectives, you might get a, a radio broadcast saying enemy reinforcements have entered the building kind of thing, so on your way back out, you might have to fight some even bigger foes. There's also plenty of bosses to shoot down and, and kill. And do you know what this game, right? It's absolutely freaking old school brutality. This is, if you think you're good, or maybe you thought you were good at these kind of games, you're going to get a shock when you play this. You, I mean, I played this on normal difficulty, and I'm struggling here. I'm really struggling. I've had to save scum my way through certain levels, as you can see in some of the footage. Uh, it's brutal. I, I would say normal difficulty is ultra difficulty now for a AAA game. Uh, that's how big the disparity is between the 90s, uh, the noughties, and 2020, and 2021. It's, I mean, if you play this on hard, it's just like, what the hell are you, what, what the hell are you doing, man? So that's a word of warning if you do play this, because you can't change the difficulty level, apparently, you haven't tried, but apparently you can't change it once, you, once you've selected it for that playthrough. Another good thing about this is the way the missions take place. It's very Medal of Honor-y. Uh, you, you have a, an allied base, and you've got a, a briefing room in there, there's a bar, there's plenty of people milling around, it's atmospheric. I mean, it looks dodgy, the, the graphics aren't great, but it's a throwback to the old graphics. That's why it looks like that, it's kind of a retro, it's meant to look like this. But before each mission, you get a briefing, you get the, the projector on the wall showing you what your objectives are, and it all feels really cool, and you'll see nods to plenty of missions that took place uh, during World War II. There's also um, a, a shop where you can buy extra perks, if you like. I'll call them perks, but it's basically extra ammo, extra first aid kits, armor, weapons, and things that you can take on your missions with you. Now, you get the money for these by finding secret areas when you're on a mission where there's treasure. Remember that that used to happen in Doom? Sorry, in Wolfenstein, the early Wolfenstein, you'd find secrets and you'd find little gold coins and crowns and stuff like that. Well, here, you can actually spend them in the actual pre-briefing area that's an armory really and then you head off into the actual missions really cool stuff the missions themselves like i said are very well designed excellently designed some of them 
Some of them are just average kind of design missions, but some of them are really excellent in their design and their intricacy. And it, it's just a joy to play these old maps again. One of the things that I've really been hammering about a lot of modern day shooters is the level design is so bought. Call of Duty, for example, the level designs in that are just trash. They have been for years. And when you play stuff like the early Doom game, even if you, if you play Doom, the first Doom, uh, you'll see how great the level designs were. Well, this is kind of like that. The people who uh, made this mod obviously are massive fans of the old original Doom and Wolfenstein, and they've brought that home with this, with the designing of the levels. There's also plenty of um, weapons. You can't aim down sights in anything except the sniper rifle, which is, again, old school. That's the way it was. Um, it can make that shooting a little bit tricky, though which is why I have a crosshair on. But once you get going with it, the gun plays brilliant. It really is. You walk into a room, you can clear a room in seconds. All the gameplay footage you're looking out here is, is on medium. So you can see that there's no bullet sponges, but certainly they don't go down with one hit. You need to put a few um, holes in these people before the drop. And especially the big guys, they'll need quite a few holes in them. Uh, you do a lot of ammo management and health management. One of the levels I just managed to escape, I think, with 2 or 4% of me health left. That's how brutal this game is. And I died about 6 times or 7 times just getting to that point. It's, it's really tough, but that's what gives it a challenge. That's what makes it fun. Now, on the downside of this... Um, it doesn't run fantastically. I get a few frame drops. There's a shit ton of stuff you can alter and change and tweak. Far too much, really. I mean, I go on about there's not enough. In this, there's bloody tons of shit that you can tweak. I haven't had time to um, go in and twiddle a lot with it all because I, I was in the middle of doing a city builder when this came up, but I just thought I'm going to drop the city builder for the time being and get on with this because this is great fun. This is right up my alley. And I had to get this finished today. So I can go back to the city builder because um, I've got Resident Evil and I've got Hood that I'm reviewing over the next few days. So that's going to take up all my time. But I just thought I'd get this out, guys. Anyway, back to the bad things. Some of the animations are wonky. Uh, the, the way the enemy performs sometimes look like they're doing cartwheels. It's, it's kind of wrong. Some of the AI doesn't respond very well. Uh, you'll come into a room sometimes and they'll just kind of look at you. Uh, until they kick in that they have to fight you that's happened quite a few times but once they actually are on you once they're engaged in combat the ai is really good the, the dodge and weave and their accuracy is brilliant and you take quite a bit of damage um, you, they can easily put you down in a few seconds if you're not taking cover or ducking or bobbing and weaving and all that before i wrap this up guys huge respect to the developers for not holding back on their depiction of events that actually took place during World War II. Uh, they're in this game. You'll not find them in any other game. I've certainly never seen them in any other war game, and I've pretty much played most of them. But when I played this, I was actually quite shocked to find myself in some of the situations and some of the places that I was in, witnessing some of the horrors that I saw, because I know these things actually happened in World War II. And because of censorship and politically correct bullshit, you would never get these in a game. So, huge respect for the developers for putting it in the game so that we don't forget that these things actually did happen. It keeps the game authentic, it keeps it, it, the game true to what really happened in World War II. Um, obviously, there wasn't quite as many zombies and giant Frankenstein monsters going around in World War II, uh, but that's Wolfenstein for you. It sticks to the facts of World War II, but then adds the fictional side as well. So this is a mixture of both but it does hit on some of the real hard facts that happened in World War II. So there you go, guys. There's no reason not to have this if you're an old school shooter because it's completely free. It's um, 30 levels, guys. Hours and hours of free fun. Definitely, definitely worth a download. Links in the description where you can get this.